The question is that the motion be agreed to, and I call the Honourable Member for Holt. Uh, thank you very much, uh, <clears throat> excuse me, Mr Deputy Speaker. Uh, Deputy Speaker, I'm uh, honoured today to speak uh, on this private member's motion by the member for Fowler and congratulate him on doing so. He's a, um, a well-known campaigner for human rights in Vietnam, and I've read several of his speeches actually in preparation for this contribution today. I congratulate him on this motion. Um, and I also rise to, obviously, from my perspective, express the concerns of my local Vietnamese community in halt about human rights abuses in Vietnam in this parliament and in this place. It's, so, it's said, when you look at the official briefing papers, that Australia enjoys a strong bilateral relationship with Vietnam since the establishment of diplomatic relations in 1973. It's said that Australia is a leading study destination for Vietnamese students, with more than 23,000 student enrolments in Australian educational institutions and an estimated 10,000 students undertaking Australian education and training courses in Vietnam. And this has apparently been aided by RMIT University beginning operations in 2001 in Vietnam as the first wholly owned foreign university in Vietnam. That's what's said. In Australia, I'm proud to say that we have wonderful Vietnamese community of over 150,000 people. Some say, the DFAT briefing paper says 210,000, regardless of the number. It's a wonderful community that makes a significant contribution to our country. I believe it's the fourth largest in the world outside of Vietnam. Since 1975, Vietnamese migrants have made a profound contribution to Australia through their culture and through their history and what they bring to this country. They are a proud people, very deeply concerned about their country. And whilst Again, it's said that Australia builds closer ties with Vietnam. Many Vietnamese people in Australia are deeply concerned about the previous, the past and the ongoing human rights abuses in Vietnam. The Vietnamese community who now call Australia home enjoy the virtues of living in a democracy and universal human rights principles. They have the freedom of expression. They desire, however, that their relatives in their homeland would enjoy such similar freedoms. But under the current socialist Republic of Vietnam, the regime, such freedoms for many just don't exist. And instead, as we've heard from contributions from the member of Fafal and the other honourable member, the Vietnamese government continues to systematically suppress freedom of expression, association and peaceful assembly. Now, I've heard about the Australian-Vietnam Human Rights Dialogue, which my colleague, I think it's the ninth one, my colleague, the member for Fowler, has participated and participates in, and that presents an opportunity. But whilst that presents an opportunity, it doesn't stop us in this place speaking with one loud, powerful voice on behalf of the Vietnamese community in our electorates across the country. And I, for example, the member for my Victorian state colleague, Luke Dunellen, the member for Nari Warren North, who's actually been to Vietnam, and obviously the member for Fowler and others, we will consistently and we will continue to report to this parliament human rights abuses that continue in Vietnam. The government must, the Vietnamese government must be held accountable. And I'd like to thank Mr. Tien Dung, Dung Kyo, the president of the Vietnamese TV on Channel 31, for coming personally into my office to talk about the human rights abuses that are occurring in Vietnam and have occurred. And he specifically brought to my attention the two young Vietnamese activists who were recently arrested and sentenced for, for criticising the government. Imagine we did that in this country. We just about arrest everybody. But in Vietnam, you can basically criticise your government and you're put in prison. That is unacceptable. Doesn't matter if it's a socialist republic, it is unacceptable. Last month, as we've heard, student Nguyen Phong Nguyen and computer technician Din Nguyen Ka were convicted on subversion charges. Interesting for young university students to be charged for, with subversion. According to the state media, that sort of wonderfully free and august independent organisation, Nguyen Phong Nguyen and, and, and Din Nguyen Ka were arrested for handing out leaflets that distort the party and the state's policies related to religion and land and exhibiting a twisted viewpoint regarding the Spratly and Paracel Islands and the borderland between Vietnam and China, two young university students. 
The state media, again that independent organisation, accused the two of calling and agitating people to protest against the Communist Party of Vietnam and the Socialist Republic of Vietnam. As I said, putting people on trial for distributing leaflets critical of the government, if that was done in other democracies, you'd have a revolution on your hands. It's incredible, and I know that's mirrored by the Vietnamese community that are here today in my Vietnamese community. They feel very deeply about the fact that you had a one-day trial on May 2013 when Nguyen Phu Nguyen was given six years in prison, a young university student, whilst Din Nguyen Ca received eight years following a one-day trial, a one-day trial. That's a system of justice in a country, isn't it, eh? According to the Human Rights Watch, Nguyen Phu Nguyen, 21, from Han Tan Ban Bak District, Bintan Province, is a student, as I've said, at the capital's university. The police arrested Nguyen on the 14th of October 2012 in the Tanpu District and took her to the police station in the Tanpu District's ward without informing her family. Imagine if you had a son and a daughter in this country where you, they were protesting legitimately and you were taken away and not told where that, your, your son or your daughter was. Now, Phun Nguyen's family and friends launched an intensive search for her by making inquiries at the police station and alerting the public via non-state channels, according to, including the BBC and Radio Free Asia. It's not until eight days later, eight days, that an officer at the Tay Tan police station told Nguyen's mother that she'd been transferred to the police of Long An province. On the 23rd of October, uh, so October 2012, the Long An police acknowledged that Fung Nguyen had been charged with conducting propaganda against the state. That's what free speech gets you in Vietnam. Under Article 88 of the Penal Code, according to the indictment, Nguyen Phong Nguyen, Nguyen was officially arrested on the 19th of October 2012, leaving five days un just unaccounted for by officials. According to reports, Nguyen's mother claims that on a visit on the 26th of April 2013, she saw many bruises on her daughter's neck, upper arm, uh, upper chest and arms. The mother said that Fung Nguyen had told her that she was beaten and kicked severely in the stomach in detention. It was only when she fainted that prison guards came in to stop the beating and took her to see a doctor. Human rights in Vietnam. According to Human Rights Watch, Din Nguyen Ca was from the city of Tan An. He was obviously, on the, on the 10th of uh, October 2012, he apparently allegedly dropped, dropped anti-government leaflets at An Swung Overpass in the capital. According to a copy of the indictment on the 29th of September, the People's Court convicted and sentenced Din Din Ka to two years in prison for intentionally causing leaflets. Don't drop leaflets, don't hand out leaflets. Because in Vietnam, particularly when they speak about freedom, they cause injury to others, according to the government of the Socialist Republic of Vietnam. And so he was also charged under this article of terrorism, Article 84, very convenient article. We need to continue to strongly condemn these human rights abuses because they are nothing more than human rights abuses. And we need to continue on behalf of the Vietnamese community to raise these issues until the government changes its stance, until they treat their people with respect, until they afford, afford their own people the right that Vietnamese people in this country have. I also just want to raise very briefly in the time I have remaining about the ongoing case of Father Thaddeus Nguyen Van Lai, a Catholic priest who's basically been nominated for the 2013 Nobel Peace Prize by US members of Congress Chris Smith and Zoe Logfrim. Now we know about the story of Father Lai, but what you might not know was in 2006, my state parliamentary colleague, Luke Donnellan, the member for Narry North, visited Father Lai in March 2006, to discuss his treatment at the hands of the authorities. After visiting Father Lai in Vietnam, Mr. Donnellan was banned, this is a member of state government, banned from visiting Vietnam for five years by the Vietnamese government. This action by the Socialist Republic of Vietnam to ban a Victorian member of parliament from visiting <coughs> Vietnam is disappointing to say the least, and I'm using diplomatic language. Mr. Nellon was standing up for the universal principles of protecting and defending human rights. So again, thank you, Member for Fowler, for this motion. We will continue to raise this, these ongoing issues, these ongoing abuses. Young university students in this country can protest without imprisonment, without, in, without beating, without being taken off the streets. This must happen in Vietnam. We can't continue 
to conduct discussions with Vietnam and the government without continuing to raise these issues, and as long as I'm in this place, we'll continue to do so. Thank you. I thank the honourable member for Holt.